Ryan here with E39 Source and my 2000 E39 M5. And today we're replacing the entire hood latch system. All of the cables, the latches, all the way from the handle out here to the pegs that go down in the holes when you close the hood. Those are the pegs, these are the latches. So we'll replace that, replace that, the cable in between, another cable to the junction box, the junction box through the firewall to the release handle in the cabin. Now I've actually replaced that cable before, but it's been six years and it's been opened hundreds of times since then. Uh, this DIY is really for people who are way too involved in their cars and have opened their hood more times than their driver's door. So the reason I'm replacing these cables is I've noticed that uh, when I pull the hood latch inside the car, I have to pull it a lot further than I used to. It feels like the cables, they are a, a braided steel cable, they're a Bowden cable inside a rubber or plastic sleeve. Uh, those cables stretch, they can fray, and uh, should they break, then you're stuck with your hood closed and no way to open it, which is not a good situation. If that has happened to you, there's a way to, unfortunately, you've got to destroy your kidney grills and saw them out or break them out, and then you can get in there and manually trip these latches. I'm not sure how to do that, but I know there's DIYs online, so if you're stuck there, check that out. If you think it's possible that the cable broke inside the car, you can actually come over here, remove the handle with a Phillips head screw, grab the piece of the cable that isn't broken with some pliers, and pull it. That's what happened to me in 2012. It's actually Christmas Day 2012. That was my Christmas present. My hood cable broke. Uh, so we are replacing that again, just so everything's new at one pine. We're going to talk about some parts. And before I do that, big thanks to FCP Euro for sponsoring this video. Uh, they offer a lifetime warranty on every single part that you buy. So say you buy these from FCP, you install them in your car, and uh, you know, 30 years later you still have the car and you're still opening the hood every day because it's an old car now, and the cables break again. You buy new ones, you send these back, and you are reimbursed. The lifetime warranty is just that, a lifetime warranty from FCP Euro. Let's firstly go through the parts, starting under the hood. So there are two of these latches. Unfortunately, mine are very rusty, but fortunately we're replacing them today. So the only thing that really looks bad under the engine bay will be replaced. I'm looking forward to that. So there's two of those. The part number for the latches is 512382038589. You'll need two of those. In between the two latches, we have this Bowden cable here. And that part number is all the way at the bottom. It is 512381765969. From the driver's hood latch over to the junction box, which is here, to the junction box located on the chassis, that's another cable. And that part number is 512381907754. We'll need just one of those. Going from the under hood junction box through the firewall into the cabin and connecting to your release lever is our final part, final cable, 512381765995. And that's got the little grommet to go through the firewall, and that's where the handle connects. If you're like me and you like to replace hardware, we can replace all six of the Torx bolts. There's three around each latch that hold the latch into the core support. So we'll need six of those Torx bolts. Here they are. That is a 0714698505. Now, unfortunately, this job is fairly involved in the way that we need to remove the front bumper and not sure what it's called, but this piece of M-specific trim. If you're doing this on any 39, 525, 28, 30, 35, or 40, uh, your part's a little bit different, but it's the exact same thing. Your bumper's a little different, but it's the exact same process. Uh, so bear with me, you'll see how this is done. It's not that hard, it's, it's just more steps. And uh, when we have the bumper off, and then we remove this piece of trim here, uh, we have direct access to our um, auxiliary fan, the pusher fan, the electric fan, not the mechanical engine fan. So, of course, we've got to do that too. Uh, this one's original in my car. This is the Bear or Hella original equipment manufacturer for BMW. It's about a fourth the price of the genuine BMW branded product. And our part number there is 6454692139. The fan is held on with four nuts which are here, BMW part number 223167609094. We're gonna kick things off in the cabin, down there in the footwell. I'll see if I can get some better lighting in here. 
Um, I figure it's best to start inside while we're still clean. Taking off the bumper, we might be a little bit greasy. Uh, probably gonna have to jack, I am gonna have to jack the car up and remove the wheels so we'll get a little bit dirty there. So we're gonna start in the cabin and work outwards towards the latches. And our first step here is just gonna be super simple. This is the hood release cable and there is a small Phillips screw at the top holding that on. Get a Phillips screwdriver and remove your handle. The handle easily comes off like that. Put your screw somewhere safe so you don't lose that. We're gonna reuse that here in however many hours this takes us. Uh, now we need to remove the uh, driver's pedal box ceiling, as I've always called it. There's a big piece of plastic up here. Um, I've got the Euro Dash, so this is a little bit different, uh, but it's, it's the same idea in any of these cars. So to do that, we firstly need to remove the transmission tunnel uh, piece of trim. This one's carpeting. If you have a full leather M5, it will be leather, so be a little bit more careful with that. This is a real easy piece to remove. We can see one exposed brass Phillips screw there, so let's pull that out and then the whole trim is gonna slide back towards the rear of the vehicle, maybe two or three inches, and then come out very easily. That slides back just like I said, and gives us a little bit more room in here. Uh, so moving on to um, removing the pedal box ceiling, I've got these two tiny little Allen heads here for the Euro steering column and Euro pedal box ceiling. So I'm gonna pull those out. If your car's a strict US spec like this one used to be, it's just gonna be more of those gold brass Phillips screws. And they're up here in the top. Uh, there's one here, there's one there, there's another one here. Um, just take out any that you see holding that piece of trim in. And then all the way back behind the clutch and brake pedal here, there's two quarter turn fasteners. You just turn it 90 degrees. For some reason mine are in different positions for 90 degrees maybe. And uh, wiggle them out and that'll release the back of it. That releases and comes down quite easily. And then instead of unplugging your gong speaker, those connectors are for some reason pretty difficult to squeeze and pull out. You can do it if you want. But I found it easier to just remove the speaker from the piece of trim. Uh, there's a set of clips on each end that you'll just press the clips on the speaker towards the center and then work it out of the trim. And this one popped out very easily. Uh, before anybody asks, this red wire here is my T4 pin for the gong, which is for the front PDC that I retrofitted to this car. And I am gonna clean up this wire install. It looks like I was in a hurry and, and didn't uh, quite fasten that as, as well as I usually do. So we'll take care of that here today. The dead pedal comes out next, but to do that right, we're gonna remove this sill strip here. Not the one that has your BMW or M logos on it, but that's just the black piece of plastic in front. This thing comes out pretty easily. It's got a clip on the far left, a clip in the middle, and a clip on the far right. So what I like to do is Get my fingers, it's flexible plastic, you can bend it a little bit. Put your fingers, one in between the first and second clip and another set of hands, another hand in between the uh, center and third clip, and then you're just gonna pull straight up. So you get that out like that, you can see the three holes the clips go into. Sometimes the clips stay in the trim, sometimes they fall out altogether, sometimes they stay in the car. It's a little annoying when they stay in the car because then you've gotta get a tool like this and pull them out. Uh, trying not to break them. So we were successful with that, didn't break any of those. We can now remove this and move on to removing the dead pedal. The first step in removing the dead pedal is removing this little guy. So he lives in here behind the handle. There's a little slot in the front. Stick a flathead screwdriver in there, turn it 90 degrees, and then pry it out. It's one of those like that held on the back of the uh, pedal box ceiling. It just turns 90 degrees and pulls out. So I think that's gonna be the only fastener that we have to play with. And uh, now we're just gonna pry the dead pedal out of here. Here's the back side of the dead pedal. Uh, you do, when you, when you start removing it, pry out from here. And that's gonna allow you to get in here, pinch this little tab on the blue connector. The blue connector is for your hood release button, which is right there. So you wanna make sure that you disconnect that before you go on ripping it out of here. Then you've got a series of some pegs and some grommets and some other clips that hold this thing in here. Excuse the very dusty carpeting. Uh, but it just fits into the chassis. It fits down into that hole with the spider web in it by the carpeting. Um, and it kind of pulls to the right and then straight out. Mind your uh, trim and, and lower dash area here. Uh, be gentle with it. You get a light back there, you'll see how it works. It's not so bad. And uh, now we can see the cable that actually looks really bad. And that's only a couple years old. Right there, look how frayed that is. That's on the verge of breaking again. So that's probably why the why it feels so bad, look at that. That's destroyed. So this part here that I'm, I'm messing with, 
and where the handle connects is part of the um, the cable that I showed you that connects to the handle. It's right here. So there's a is that a Phillips? There's a Phillips screw there. We can remove or just peel back some of this uh, insulation, and uh, then we're going to get up very shortly here under the hood and near the firewall. It's not a Phillips screw, it's one T20 that holds this assembly onto the chassis. And when you remove the T20, you then want to take this whole assembly, twist it counterclockwise, if you were looking at it straight on, and it pulls out. It's got these uh, keys on the back that go in at an angle and then rotate into a locking position and then is, is held in finally by the torques. And that cable is just beyond trashed and frayed. And that's exactly what happened last time uh, because this is where it articulates. The rest of the cables are just sliding um, through, the, through the Bowden cable sleeves, whereas this one is articulating nearly 90 degrees every time you pull the handle. So this is where the majority of the stress is. So we've got it freed from here. Hopefully you've already opened your hood because now it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, so make sure you have your hood open before we get this far. And then we're gonna come out here under the hood and take apart a couple things to access uh, where it goes through the firewall. So we've taken these things apart on camera many, many times. Uh, I will include in this video how that's done, it's very easy. So firstly, remove your airbox lid, then your filter, great time to inspect, replace the filters if necessary. There's a small clip here, pinch the tabs in, pull it, don't almost lose it like I did. Then we have the um, hood sensor, if you still have that, just pinch the, uh, pinch the wire harness on it. <laughs> and after a short rescue mission, we're back. It landed on the belly pan. And come on guys, if you work on cars, you've gotta have one of these little claw tools, a little spring clip and the whole thing's flexible and that thing opens up, grab it, pull it out, no big deal. Uh, so moving on, we have a rubber gasket piece of trim that lifts up and out of the way as such. And then we've got three tabs right here. Just release those with your finger or a screwdriver. Now we can take the box out on this corner, lift it up, and pivot it out towards the center of the car. And now we're done with that. So we can actually see this is the hood cable right here. It heads into the firewall. There's a grommet on the other side to prevent any critters or moisture or whatever from intruding into the cabin under the dash. Um, since this old cable's trashed, I'll probably just take a pair of snips and cut it and pull it through instead of trying to feed it through the right way. Now we get over here, it goes under this, and this stuff's a little delicate because it's pretty old now, but we'll be able to, uh, to feed it through that. Following down over here, it pops into a clip. We can release it from the clip, and then we're replacing this entire thing, so just pry it out. If you're only doing this cable, be more careful with this, put a tool in there and pry it out so you don't break these little tabs that hold it into the chassis. Now this thing's a trap door, it opens like that, and the two cables, see, they ha see how they have a, a hammer on the end? That's the junction box right there. So if you're just replacing the one, you would simply pull this cable out, release the hammer from the, from the junction, and like that, and here's our cable. So here's the old piece. Pushing it through the firewall is a little easier said than done. It's pretty tight. Uh, I didn't cut it. If you're replacing this, why not? It would probably be a little bit easier. So this is obviously the end where the handle was. Um, so it, it's oriented kind of like this in relation to the car. And we came under the hood here, got a big flathead screwdriver and just started wailing on it, pushing it um, into the cabin through the hole in the firewall. And once you get that, that piece of metal through there, and it, it, that's how it's installed, it's supposed to fit through there, you just have to force it. Uh, so force it inside, uh, grommet got a little messed up there, it's supposed to look like that but push everything inside and then just grab it on the inside and pull it through. And we can get a better look at, at this frayed cable here. Look at that. That is days away from snapping and having no hood. There's, I think there's two pieces of metal in there out of like 15, 10 or 15 that are supposed to hold that. And there's our side by side, obviously with the new part on the left. Huge difference. Uh, the rest of the cable's fine. As I've said, it's, it's just that first hammer in there that, that all the force ends up having to go through. So um, I'm gonna install this and we're gonna put the interior back together so everything will be done to the junction box and then we'll focus on removing the bumper and, and replacing the actual latches. So installation of this cable is pretty easy. Take this end 
and shove it through the hole in the firewall and have somebody pull it through until you get to the grommet. Slow down when you do get to the grommet so you don't break it and uh, we'll push it in slowly. So inserting the cable from here is really easy. Stick it up through the hole, have somebody pull it a little bit. And then you're gonna come over here, put your fingers right against the firewall and just kind of start pulling it through without tearing it. You gotta be gentle with it. And when you get it, you'll know when you have it through far enough when there's a little bit of a step and it makes it through and then doesn't wanna go back in. It's pretty easy, it took about 30 seconds. So I have that through. Then instead of tearing this apart here where the cable goes through, I just put it through the hole and pulled it. And we have our new cable all the way out here to the junction box. So if you were stopping here, you would simply insert the hammer, the barb, whatever you want to call that, on the end of the cable, back into the channel on the junction box, right there, and you would be done. Close the box, new cable. We're gonna keep going and replace it all the way out. So I'm, at this point, I'm gonna reassemble um, the lower air box here which is very simple, it goes in the same way it came out. You kind of pivot it down and then lower it. Connect this hose. Uh, make sure that the little wire for your hood sensor is, see this is on this peg here on the strut tower, that's where the little clip went. You want it in between the box and that peg, not on the outside of it. That's the proper installation there. I've done everything but put my floor mat back in because I'm gonna take this opportunity to vacuum under there. But everything goes together exactly how it came apart. You start here, you key your little uh, part of the cable in. When you put the handle on, uh, note that you don't over tighten that screw and it is gonna be hard to turn right now because you're kind of making the threads. Uh, it's a self tapping metal screw in the plastic uh, bore. So it's making the threads as you screw it. Um, in there, but don't go too tight because then it won't release, it won't spring back. We're not connected to anything right now, that's why it's so easy. Uh, but that's put back together, I put the ceiling back, the carpet piece goes on last, uh, line the pegs up for the holes on this, and then just whack it, and then I'll go down and click into place. And uh, we're done in the cabin now, minus some vacuuming that I'll do later. Got that red wire all cleaned up. And now we're gonna move out front because we're here at the junction box now. And, yeah, we're gonna have to get the car up in the air. We're gonna take the wheels off. So first thing's gonna be to break those lug nuts free. Uh, they are 17 millimeters, 17 millimeter studs. We will break those free, ensure that the car is in park. First gear with the parking brake. I always put the parking brake on since we are going to lift it. Uh, we're gonna use the center jack point to lift it, which is down there uh, under the engine pretty far. That's why I'm on wood right now. My jack won't slide under there. Even the, uh, the low profile Harbor Freight won't slide under there unless I put it up, uh, up on wood. So brake lugs free, jack under, lift, use jack stands on the side points, leave the jack in there for safety if you wish, and remove the wheels. The wheels are off, go ahead and inspect your tires for any nails or damage or wear and that sort of stuff. It's a great time to look at your suspension, your brakes, pads, rotors, bushings, all that. Make sure you're good. Um, the bumper's not held on by a whole lot, so we remove what we call the pork chops, these little fenders. Uh, there's an eight millimeter at the top, an eight millimeter at the top, another eight millimeter at the top, and that's right in here in your wheel liner, which is gonna get cleaned out shortly. Um, then at the bottom, this is the inside of the bumper obviously, it's held in with four somethings. I don't even know what the correct BMW hardware is. Real OEM makes it very difficult to tell. So I have these old rusty 10 millimeter self-tapping sheet metal screws in there into acceptors, which annoyingly uh, don't always stay put. And then you have to shove a screwdriver in there for reassembly and line them up again. Uh, but whatever's holding your car, your fender liners on there, just remove them. So there'll be a total of seven fasteners on each one. Um, important to note on the passenger side, this is where your temp sensor lives, inside that little NASA looking cone. So you'll want to disconnect that and feed it through the hole. Uh, that's the temp sensor right there, so you don't rip that out. The driver's side is easier, there's no electrical components in the pork chop. You just take the seven screws out and drop it down. Um, I also found it easier to release a couple of the screws on the center belly pan. Uh, they're this uh, quarter turn Phillips and then they should stay in place. That just allowed me to drop this down so I could work right here and uh, get the fender liner out. So with the fender liners out, reach up there and unplug your fog lights. You just squeeze the tab on the, on the connector and pull it out or remove the bulb. Either, one, either way, just make sure your fog light's no longer connected to the car outside of the bumper. And then the last thing holding this bumper on are two T50s 
very long bolts that look like this, Torx 50 head. And I like to put a little bit of tape in here, just some maskers, some masking tape or some painter's tape, just to ensure that whatever tools you use, you don't, you know, drop the bolt and scratch your bumper. Uh, but uh, with those out, we're ready to pull it out. The only thing holding this bumper on the car right now, electrically, are the PDC sensor wires. So when we get this out about six inches, we'll be able to reach back there and unplug each sensor. And then if you have the, where would they be? They'd be right here, the um, headlight washers. You're gonna have to disconnect those two. There's, I don't have them, so I can't show you, but there's a little prong thing that you pull out and then the hose just releases itself. Carefully place your bumper on something that won't scratch it. We just put it down on some towels and a floor mat here in the garage. Uh, so now with that off, uh, we're gonna have a little bit better access to uh, these, which are the reason we're taking all this apart to be able to get them out. We can take the, the, the uh, T30s or whatever they are out quite simply, but fishing them out, I can feel it, but I'm not gonna get anywhere. So now we need to remove this piece of, this is the M specific trim with all these lips on it. Uh, the regular five series has a very similar piece that's held on in a very similar way. The first three connectors, or the first three clips are up on top. And they're the kind that have the peg that push down in there. So you can't just pry these out, you'll break it. We need something very skinny to come up from the bottom and press that pin upwards through the connector. So removing this piece of ductwork has is, is just been a barrel of fun so far. Uh, these three clips up here, you're supposed to be able to push the center part up from the bottom or down from the top. I could not get it to budge at all. So I used my pry tool, which has gone missing. And there it is. I uh, put that in there and just forced them out. Um, it's not great for them. We didn't destroy them, they're still usable. And then once I got it out, I was able to turn it into what it's supposed to look like, right? It's supposed to have a little peg coming out the top. So they'll go back in fine, but removal was a pain. Um, now, holding this thing on, we found an eight millimeter uh, bolt over here. That came out easily. Over here, there's a wire zip tied to it. That's the wire for the aux fan. This thing is kind of like the clips at the top, just larger. I was able to pry that out and then pull the peg out right there. Looks like that. Didn't have to cut the zip tie. Uh, but now we're running into the problem that there's more bolts behind the headlights, like right here. So whoop de freaking do the headlights have to come out. So there's that M specific piece of trim. Comes off fairly easily. Once you remove the headlights, yeah, you get to take those out again. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you've done headlights before. There's an eight mil, there's an eight mil. There's two more eight millimeters on the bottom. And then you just unplug everything. Your level sensor, um, I took the halo bulb out because it's easier to take out versus unplugging. The signal bulbs are hard, are hard to get to, that's fine. Um, take, it, take the headlight out completely until that's the only thing holding it in and then just remove the socket. Same thing on the other side, it all comes apart pretty well. That will show where the other eight millimeter bolts are that are holding in that piece of trim. So there's one there and one there. So that's why the lights had to come out. Then you've got your aux fan right here. If you're doing that too, it's just four 13 millimeter nuts, one on each point and then the wire, which is this huge wiring harness. You just pinch the side and pull them apart. Uh, so now that we're at this step and it's easier to get these latches out with the fan out, although you can still do it with the fan in, there's just three Torx 30s, I think, on each one. Release those. Keep in mind there's a cable running up here in between those two. And um, then they just drop out the bottom. You kind of got to pull a little bit because they've got these uh, hood bump stops in the way, but you can finesse those out. And here's the old parts, they're absolutely trashed. These things are original. The cables are not frayed, but they're rusting. Uh, the old mechanism here doesn't move nearly as freely as it should. It just looks bad. And then look over here, that cable's actually split open and has swollen. So these things are shot, so it's good we're getting all new stuff in here today. At this point, we're ready to build our new setup. So we'll open those latches um, out of the packaging, and then we're gonna connect we're gonna start over here, the furthest one from the cable, or from the handle in the car. We're gonna connect the Bowden cable, run it over here to the second one, connect the cable, and then just feed the cable up under the core support and over to, well, the junction box is on the new piece, but over to the piece coming from the handle. So here's one of the new latches, and then I have the cable that's just a hammer to a hammer, nothing else. This is gonna go in between them. So you see the hammer fits down in a groove, and then the cable, goes through a little slot in this black piece, and then your Bowden part of the cable here uh, slides into that. So if we were to grab the other end, grab that hammer and pull it, 
can see how that seamlessly, seamlessly articulates the spring latch. Now we can take that side and slide it up into place. See those three holes just match up and we can maybe hand thread those so Joe doesn't have to hold it. And then the other end is going to be over here in the other hole for the other latch. And the latches are the same even though this latch has an input and an output, this one only has an input. It terminates there. There's no more cables. Uh, so we'll just do the little cable thing, put the hammer in there and slide the sheath of the cable uh, into the other latch on that side. So this part's all pretty simple. Um, the only annoying thing is there are no threads in the holes for these new latches. There's holes there, but they aren't tapped. So when you install your hopefully new um, Torx bolts, you're going to want to hold that um, perfectly straight. You don't want to go in at an angle and then just tap the holes yourself, which involves a little bit of pressure and just going slowly uh, with your, your socket and Torx bit. So both of those are in. Put them down until they're um, leave a little bit of play so the whole thing moves around in there. Then close your hood. Before you do that, make sure you do have everything connected. Pull the cable in the car and make sure these springs are moving in there to release it uh, when you get it shut. So uh, once you've done that, close the hood. That'll kind of align these things as they're supposed to be aligned. Then open the hood carefully. Have somebody hold the latch in there from the bottom very hard and then go ahead and tighten that down. There's no, I don't know a torque spec for it. Don't go over, overly tight, just make it tight. Um, Moving the cables in there is real easy. I installed the junction box, put the other hammer in there. Uh, this one was a little trickier because it has the input and the output. You'll see exactly how that works. Uh, remember that you do have to feed the Bowden cable here uh, just in this little, it's like an inch by inch hole in there. It's real easy. Don't, so like don't connect it out here. You're going to have to run the cable through there and then connect it here and, and fish it up in there. It's all pretty easy. Next we move on to the aux fan install, which we already had the other one out. It's four 13 millimeter bolts and the wiring harness. The new one just slides into place, thread the bolts on, no need to go too tight. Uh, here's the electrical connector, it only goes one way. And we had to move over this little, little snap thing that allows it to, uh, to snap into the, the shroud piece that we're about to put over that. So there's a, a lever in there, you stick a little pick or a screwdriver and release the lever, it's very German slide the thing off and then slide it back on the new cable and the new fan. If you guys didn't know, the E39 has two horns, a high tone and a low tone. So we decided to take this opportunity to enjoy messing around with this a little bit. So I've unplugged the one. We've left the other one. Give it a hit, Kenan. <laughs> now let's unplug that one. Plug in the top one. And that's the low tone. And now together. About an hour and a half later, we're back together. Um, it, it looks a lot more intimidating than it is to take off the headlights and the bumper and get back there to the fan. Uh, but it's not so bad, it really isn't. There's very few little holding this bumper on once you remove the fender liners and those, those two front uh, big Torx 50s, it all pulls apart quite well. The hardest part of this entire job is just wrestling with the dead pedal because it's kind of a weird angle that that thing comes out at. Uh, but once you get past that, it's great. So the hood's latched now. If I come in here, it's a very, very minimal amount of force required to pull the hood open. It used to be a lot more. And I think the problem here was the front latches were so much, uh, were so worn and rusty and required a ton of force to get them to open. So all of that force can handle in these cables, it can handle the corner, it can handle the junction, but when it goes down to the handle and it articulates down there, that was the weak point and that's why that failed a second time in only six years. So uh, now that everything is new, this should last a very long time, especially seeing that this car will not be in Ohio for much longer and rust and humidity and all that won't be nearly as much of an issue on the west coast. So yeah, definitely a real pain in the rear. Uh, we're, we're in about five hours here. We could have done it quicker. We ran into a couple little snags. We had to cut a bolt, stuff like that. Uh, but everything's put back together now and, and looks great. The bumper fits beautifully. I replaced all the hardware down there, so that's all fresh. And uh, got a nice new hood latch set now. So again, a big thanks to FCP Euro for their support on this video. And uh, we'll talk in the next one. Thanks guys for watching.